Making a Stuart model steam plant, this one is part 29, fitting the cylinder cladding and drains, followed by the inlet and exhaust manifolds. Then during the high speed testing, a problem develops, which previously I thought would happen. It's time to fit the cladding, but before I do that, I'm going to blow away all of the oil, or most of the oil, from around the cylinders, which has leaked from the exhaust outlets whilst I attempted to make the reversing gear work. Once I'd finished blowing away all the surplus oil, it was time to fit the cladding. For this I am using 7 BA bolts. Unfortunately I ordered 6 BA bolts so they were too big, but fate did smile on me on this occasion because I found sufficient 7 BA dome head brass bolts. This is Loctite 542, it's a thread sealant, it is not a retainer like 603. And I'm going to use some of this Loctite 542 to make sure I don't get any leaks on the threads of the drain taps. I'll probably still get leaks from the taper plug handle, but historically this seems to be the way of things, especially on these very small cylinder drain taps. I didn't need any shim washers on the first cylinder and they fitted very well. I'm hoping that they're going to do the same on this cylinder. Maybe you're thinking, why didn't I fit all the cladding in one go? And there is a simple answer for this, it's called fear of scratching the paint on the second piece of cladding whilst fitting the drain taps to the first cylinder. This is the last of the brass bolts been screwed into position. After doing this, I fitted the second set of drain taps. Without event, they fitted perfectly. In this clip, I'm cleaning the face of one of the manifold unions. These use a gasket to prevent leaks, but they still need to be flat. Here's a shot of the drain taps in position, and as you can see, they all fit very well. All I need to do is screw these into position. Now here we have a little bit of a problem. You can't screw them all the way in. For two reasons, if you screw them all the way in, they will be in the wrong position, so I could use a shim washer, but these flange unions connect to the piping, and it's really important to make sure that the piping at each side is parallel. If the piping isn't parallel, then it will look terrible. I suddenly thought, why don't I fit a silicone o-ring to each of the flange unions? And with the help of some Loctite 542 on the threads, they're not going to leak and they'll sit firmly in the correct position. Then as usual with this engine I ran into a problem. I cannot rotate the exhaust flange fully because the brackets that support the reversing gear are in the way. Solution, slacken off the nuts that hold the bracket in place. Then I can screw the flange union into the correct position. This should be fine. Apart from not leaking, the o-ring disguises the fact that there is a bit of a gap between the flange union and the steam chest and all four of these flange unions are screwed in in such a way to accommodate the piping to keep everything parallel. After doing this job, I re-tightened the nuts that hold the brackets in place, and I tightened the other ones as well. As I started working on this engine, I did notice that all the fixings were not very tight at all, so I'm a bit worried about something, more about that shortly. Fitting the inlet and exhaust manifolds was a really painful job and took a lot longer than you're seeing here. I edited this part of the video to help prevent any viewers from dropping into a coma. Once again it is important that these nuts and bolts are tight, not so tight that you shear them off, just tight enough. The time has come to fit the lubricator. This is a Stuart Models displacement lubricator, threaded, quarter by 32 threads per inch, and here after applying some Loctite 542, I'm screwing it into place on the end of the inlet manifold. I do like these Stuart displacement lubricators. Generally I use these on Stuart engines just because they look so good. They're hopelessly out of scale but it doesn't really matter. Here I've fitted my airline adapter. It's now time for a series of test runs, starting slow and then running the engine at warp speed just to make sure nothing drops off it or comes loose. The engine's running ok in both directions, but there's something wrong with the sound. My bench is designed like a soundboard to amplify any mechanical noises, and this doesn't sound right. I think the time has come for a bit of a gentle interlude. I know, I will cut the top off the spout on this bottle of Loctite 542, because the one I have been using is now empty. And I think that now the engine is almost finished, I'll put it on my turntable and get a shot of it rotating. Working on this engine really has been difficult and has taken an extraordinary long time to do. And now there is a serious problem.
I really did think this was going to happen. Everything on this engine is not tightened up properly, and now one of the pistons is hitting the top cylinder cover. And this, dear viewers, is why I always run the engines really fast at an unfeasibly high speed to put pressure on them and make anything that is loose come loose whilst it's still on my workbench. I'm going to put this matter right. I've made two felt tip pen marks on top of the piston, as you can see here, and I've temporarily put a stud in the hole to prevent metal particles from getting into the steam chest. And now I'm drilling two holes in the top of the piston, not all the way through of course, just sufficient to allow me to get a pair of circlet pliers in to tighten the piston rod into the crosshead. Once I'd finished the drilling operation, I used a vacuum cleaner first, followed by this oily toothbrush to get rid of most of the residue. What I'm doing here is taking the piston out because I want to look at it and I also want to tighten the piston onto the rod. The piston feels to be quite a good fit in the cylinder which is what you need for a piston without a ring. This is a gunmetal piston with oil grooves and gunmetal expands more than cast iron. When the engine is in steam the piston will be an even better fit in the cylinder. But first I need to take advantage of the fact that I have two holes in the piston I've clamped the piston rod very tightly in the chuck of my Myford ML7R lathe and here I'm making sure that the piston is a very tight fit on the rod. I'm using some gun wash which is lacquer thinner or cellulose thinners to clean the thread that screws into the crosshead. And here I'm applying some thread lock. I've mentioned this in a previous episode. You're okay as long as it's blue. If it's green, don't use it because that's a retainer and it's too strong. At some time in the future, someone will need to remove this piston to maybe fit a piston ring or replace the piston. So it's essential that the piston and rod can be withdrawn as one unit. If you were to use Loctite 603 and try and remove the piston using the circuit pliers, more than likely it would be just the piston that came off the rod at the top. It's best to use a thread locker and really tighten it up. Within reason, you don't want to break any other part of the engine doing this job. I repeated this entire process for the other piston. It hadn't come loose, but it was only a matter of time because it wasn't very tight in the crosshead. I haven't shown the entire process because it's exactly the same as what you've just seen. After a clean-up and refitting the second cylinder cover, it's time for a test run. And if you want to rewind and listen to the way it sounded when it first ran, and then listen to this, you will hear that it's very different. And once again, my testing is rigorous and thorough. Yes, you can move the reverse and leave it at this speed, but you don't normally do it in practice. That's it for this episode. The next video will be all of the test runs. I'm going to put them all together in a video and narrate right the beginning and then just leave you to it. This was the first test run after the piston came loose. And it's okay, but I did tweak it slightly. You'll see it in the next video. I've put the completed engine in the position it's going to be in on the baseboard. And the baseboard's going to be wider. The felt tip pen is only on the plastic, I haven't cut it yet. Unless something else goes wrong with this 10V, the next job will be making the base for it. That's it for now. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.